Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can set up Unsend on Qualify. Unsend is an open source sending infrastructure for developers. It allows you to send transactional emails. For example, if somebody signs into your website and you need to send them a magic link so they can log in, you can do this for here, for code. And you can also use it to send marketing emails, which is great. Uh, you can have a look at their website. It's fully open source and is basically an alternative to Resend or if you heard of SendGrid, it looks very similar actually. And here is a, an example of how you can use it to send emails. You can use it with all those languages. It doesn't really matter because it basically uses an API endpoint. Okay, so in order to complete this video, there are a couple of things that you will need to have starting with Qualify. I'm going to be using Qualify today just purely because it's much easier, but you can also do it through Docker if you wish to, and then follow the video once uh, you have a setup. So Qualify is one thing that you're gonna need. I've already got a video how you can set up Qualify if you haven't got it, and if you wanna explore it. The other thing that you will need is AWS. So you will need to have an account with Amazon, and this is because Unsent uses SES, which is simple email service, and is probably the most cost efficient way of sending emails using Amazon. Platforms like Recent also use SES, just so you know. So uh, yeah, it's good. The next thing that you will need is GitHub. So you will need to have a GitHub account, and I'm sure most of you do have one. And this is purely because Unsent uses GitHub for the login. And the last thing that you will need is access to your domain name so we can change the DNS records later on so we can verify your email address. And that's pretty much it. Let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to Qualify and I've got a couple of project folders here. I'm just going to do it in testing here and I'm going to add a new resource. And from here, luckily, Unsend is already available in Qualify. So let's do Unsend and here it is. Click on it, press save for now. We'll definitely need to change the name. Let's put it to unsend, save it. And once you're good here, basically, I'm gonna change the URL for me just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna remove all this and put it as unsend dot and then my domain name here, which is ready dot one and port of 3000, which is fine. Save this, let's go back. Okay, if you save all this, and as you can see, normally here we have the deploy button, but the reason that we can't deploy just yet is because we need to change some of the environment variables. If you click on this, first of all, it's going to ask us for the AWS access key and AWS default region and AWS secret key. Let's get that. So I'm going to jump to Amazon. And from here, we need to find the identity and access management. So if you search for I am like so, here it is. Click on this one here. Basically, we need to create a new user. If you click, let me zoom in a little bit more, maybe like this, and we need to click on users. And from here, as you can see, I have a couple of users that I'm already using. Let's create a new one. So create user and send dash qualify maybe. And then let's click next. Now we need to add a new user group. Let's create a new one from here, create group. And this group can be called and send, qualify, and now we need to search for permissions. Essentially, we need to give this user permissions to work with the SES, and then the unsend platform will have access to it and do everything for us, which is great. And we need access to two things. If you search here, you need to search for Amazon SES full access like so, and it should pop up in here. So tick this. And then we need to search for one more. I'm going to copy it and paste it in here. And the next one is Amazon SNS for access. Take this one as well. And now you should have permission policies set to two here. And then click on create user group. That's it. Now that we have the unsend qualifier here, click on it. So we are still creating a new user and we need to add this user to this user group and then click next. And here we're absolutely fine. Click create user and that's it. Now that we have our user here, we need to click on it. And here at the top, we need to create access key. So click on this, go down to the bottom and select other. 
go down to the bottom and click next. We don't need to put anything here, just click create access key. And that's it. Make sure that you save this. So I'm going to download the CSV file. Here it is in my downloads folder. I'm going to open it and just make sure that you have it available. Here is mine. And later on, I will definitely delete this, but uh, I have it open in here. Now, if you click done, you should have your user here and everything is looking good. If we go back to Coolify super quickly, obviously we need to put our access key in here. So let's do that. I'm going to copy the access key and paste it in here. And we need to copy the secret key as well. Let's copy and paste it inside here. And the last thing that we need to do here is the default region. So if we do, if you search for AWS region on Google, you will find this documentation here. So regions, availability zones and local zones. Click on this. And essentially, if you scroll down, there should be a list. So depending on your region, uh, you can choose where you want uh, your region to be. Essentially, like if you're in the US, maybe choose one of these. But if you are in Europe, let's have a look. Here we go. So for me, I mostly use the Europe London, which is eu dash west to so i'm going to copy this and go back and paste it inside here perfect so if i was to view them like so you'll see the access keys now don't forget to update these so i'm going to click update update and update we have three of them and if you scroll down a little bit more we are also going to need a github id and a github secret this is because Unsent is using GitHub for authentication, which is a bit of a pain, but it's not so hard to set up anyway. So let's set that up next. If you go to your GitHub account, so I'm here on my page, click, let me zoom in a little bit more, uh, click on your profile, go to settings, from settings, scroll down to the bottom and click on developer settings here. And we need to basically create a new GitHub application. Click on the button here, uh, use GitHub mobile. So I need to verify super quickly. Give me a sec. Okay, now that I'm verified, let's do on send. And then maybe rad qualify. Like so, I'm not gonna put anything else here. So the full URL to or GitHub app website, in this case will be HTTPS slash slash unsend dot and then your qualify uh, domain name so mine is ready dot one like so and then the callback here is going to be this comes from the documentation so i've already had it here but if you go to the documentation essentially they say that you should use your domain name which is the one that from here and then you should put slash api slash out slash callback slash github so this is going to be the how it authenticates and if we scroll down a little bit more, I think everything else is looking good. We don't need the webhook, so I'm going to deactivate this here. Permissions are looking good and only on this account. Perfect. Now let's click create GitHub app, copy the client ID, go back to Qualify. And, and we need to put the GitHub ID in here. So just to show you. And then if you go back to GitHub super quickly. OK, uh, by mistake, I clicked uh, the link above. But from here, all we need to do now is generate a new client secret. So let's click on this. And this is going to be my secret. I'm going to copy it and go back to Qualify and paste it inside here. So the GitHub secret, paste it in here. And here is mine. Make sure that you update this and you update this one here. And everything else is looking good. I don't think that we need to change anything else now. So these are all saved. Perfect. So now, as you can see, we have the deploy button here which is great. And just to show you one more time, the configuration here, mine is under unsend.ruddy.1 and we can click deploy. This should take a couple of seconds, maybe depending on your server. I'll probably just speed up the video here so you don't have to wait. Okay. It looks like our container has started. So I'm going to close this and everything seems to be running. So my Redis database is running, my Postgres is running and my unsent application just started running everything is looking healthy which is good so technically speaking i should be able to go to this url now so let's 
open it in the tab, press enter, and as you can see, it's fully working. Um, now we can sign into our unsent account. Click continue with GitHub, and we need to authorize this. Uh, the region here, we need to set mineworks EU West 2, but you can also go back here and uh, copy and paste it, the one that you're using. The callback is going to be the actual euro, which is unsent for me.radi.1. Uh, put that in. Send rate is going to be number of emails to send per second. I don't know what's good to be honest, but I'm just going to leave it as default and maybe research a little bit later. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Uh, transaction quota, the percentage of quota to be used for transactional emails, 0 to 100. I'm not so sure about those two, but I'm going to leave them as default for now and click create. For the team name, I'm going to put admin and click create. And here it is. Our account is fully set up. Now we need to set up our domain name. So if you go to domains, let me zoom in a little bit, click on domains. And then from here, we need to add our first domain. For me, I'm going to be using my main domain, which is radi.co.uk. And the region is going to be here, EU US 2 for me. I click add. So essentially now we need to transfer those records to our domain name here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put those two together and start doing it. Let's add a new record. And this is going to be an MX record like so. And we need to copy the information. So copy, paste, uh, copy, paste. Let's have a look. The priority needs to be 10 and save. And the next thing that we need to do is text record. So let's do copy a new record TXT. Obviously yours will be different. So you're just going to have to copy and paste them and paste like so, save, okay, two more, copy the txt one here, so add txt, paste, copy the information, paste, and save it. And the last one seems to be optional, so I'll definitely add this one if you don't have it, but I believe that I already have this one. So yeah, I already have this one here. I've configured it a little bit more for my business email, but uh, that's it. So if we add the last one as well, you should be good to go. So now if we click on verify domain, it might take uh, some time for this to happen, but uh, as you can see, these are already successful. So I just need to wait for this one here to happen. I can recheck this one here. Let me just see. The it is here, so I just need to maybe wait a little bit. Oh, here it is. It got verified straight away. So that was pretty fast. For some of you, you might have to wait a little bit. But uh, as you can see, it was literally like 10 seconds. Okay. From here, you can also uh, mess around with some of these settings. For example, the click tracking, you can click on this one. Uh, and open tracking, you can click on this one. But uh, make sure that you read what it is, because as you can see, unsend adds a tracking pixel to every email you send, and this will obviously affect the delivery rate of your emails. Perfect. So everything is working here. Click on send test email. You should be able to see how you can use uh, this unsend in your application. It's very similar to resend if you used that before. You can use it with Node.js, Python, PHP, Ruby. If we go back to AWS, from here, search for SES, which stands from Amazon Simple Email Service, click on this, and basically Unsend will already have everything set up for you. So if you go to identities, you'll see that this is already done for me. This domain name is already set up and it seems to be verified as well, which is great. You can go to configure sets. It's basically done a couple of things for me here. If you wish to have a dedicated IP, it will cost a little bit more. Like I don't know the actual pricing. You can go and have a look. You can also do that if you wish to, global endpoint. Just have a look around basically and get familiar with it. Now, if you go to get setup page here, the top one, you will see that currently I'm in a sandbox. This means that I won't be able to send emails just yet, but you can still mess around with uh, unsend safely, but you need to verify a couple of email addresses that you can test with. For example, 
Let's say I wanted to add one email address to test with. So I can click here, create identity. I can click on email and I can add one of my emails here. I'm probably going to blur it out, but if I create this identity, I'll need to verify my identity ownership. So this is going to send me an email. I'm going to go to my email super quickly. And I will have to blur this out by the way, but essentially if I click on the last one here, you will see that they've sent me a verification email and I need to click. Here it goes. Congratulations. This email is now verified. And if I go back to Amazon SES here, refresh, you'll be able to see that this email is now verified, which is great. And basically now if I go to my application, I should be able to add this email in my contacts just to test if I want to test contacts. And then inside here, I can just add one contact for now. I'm going to put my email that I just added. So I will have to blur this email address, but um, here it is. And now I can test from campaigns. I can create a new campaign. Let's put test campaign here. From is going to be my main email address and subject is going to be testing and create. Now that we have the campaign created, I can create my first email. It looks a little bit basic here, but that's just the way it is. It's not really close to stuff like MailChimp or MailerLite. But uh, I'm just going to say hello world. One thing that's a little bit hidden in here, and this is still in beta, by the way, is if you click in here, you will need to select your contact book. So I'm going to click on it and select the test contact that I just added. And now we can send our email. Let's click on send campaign. You need to type send and then press send. Campaign send successfully. You can go here to your analytics and it's probably going to take a second but uh, it should tell you whether the email was received. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my email. Here it is at the top from hello at ready.co.uk. I have hello world. And um, the email, one thing that is a little bit annoying is that the email is sent it. I wish there was a bit more options, but nevertheless, this is great to have. And if I click on analytics, maybe if you refresh now, it doesn't seem to have anything just yet, but I believe that it was working yesterday. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And the last thing that I wanted to show you before I switch off this video is if you go back to Amazon, you should be able to go to account dashboard. Basically from here, you should be able to see how many emails you sent and all of the information about your emails. Um, what else do I want to show you? Okay. Yeah. The last thing that I wanted to show you is that I mentioned that currently we are using a sandbox. So as long as your emails are verified, you can send emails to them to test. But once you are done, you need to go to get setup and you need to click on request prediction access. If you click on this from here, you need to basically fill in your details. Let's say you're doing transactional emails. You need to put your website URL and so on, and you need to acknowledge it. And then obviously, you need to submit the request. If you get approved, you should be able to use this and use Amazon SES with Unsend or any other provider. I think that's more or less it. I hope that this was useful. So let me know in the comments below what you think of Unsend. I'm going to be trying it out myself for a couple of days. Obviously, I'll need to redo everything I just showed you because I don't want to expose my API keys. Consider liking this video and subscribe to my channel if you wish to watch more videos like this. And uh, that's everything. Have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.